This video will cover the topic of word problems with multiplication or division of whole numbers. So when approaching a word problem, the first thing we need to be able to do is to translate it from words into equations. So you may have seen this table in my earlier videos. This table gives us some key words for translation. Some words for equals, such as gives, yields, is the same as, is, was, will be. Um, I'm just going to point out the sticking points in this video. Feel free to pause this and look at them a little bit longer. So when it comes to addition, the sticking point is sum, right? Um, that's not typically a word we think of for addition, but in math, when we're adding two numbers, we do call it the sum. For subtraction, it's the word difference, right? We're taking the difference. What's the difference of five and three? Well, they have a difference of two. That's subtraction. When we're multiplying two numbers, what we're really taking is the product. And when we're dividing two numbers, what we're taking is the quotient, right? So those words can be the sticky point. So let's go over briefly the steps for setting up word problems. We may not use all of these steps when solving the next uh, two examples, but I want us to get familiar with how we should approach word problems. So when starting to read a word problem, you need to read the problem carefully, right? What information is missing? What do we need to find? What are they asking us is the most important part. Next, if you need to, sometimes we don't, sometimes our problems aren't as um, complicated, right? That we may not need to assign a variable, but if you do, please do. Next, sketch it out, right? If it's a problem about finding the perimeter or the area, sometimes a drawing can really help, even if it's not the most beautiful drawing, um, to just kind of get a visual of what's going on. Write your equations, solve your equations, and state your answer. When it comes to stating your answer, first, I will always say definitely keep track of your units, right? Was it in miles? Was it in pounds? Was it in dollars? Keep track of your units. But most importantly, is does it seem reasonable, right? So when mathematicians and math professors were writing math problems, we want them to represent the real world. So if you solve a problem and it ends up being that the car was driving 250 miles per hour or a student was making $75 an hour, although that'd be great, uh, those aren't really reasonable answers at this point in time, right? So um, maybe go back and check your, your work because we want to make those answers reasonable. So let's look at our first two examples. There are nine buses, and each of these buses are taking 35 people to a game. Another bus is taking seven people. How many people are these buses taking to the game? So how could I set this up? I just want to know the total number of people going to the game. So I know my first bus, there are nine of them, each of them with 35 people, right? So if I take nine times 35, that'll tell me the number of people in those first few buses. But I'm not done because I've got one other bus that seems way less crowded. That's the bus I'd like to be on. Um, that only has seven people on it. If you hear that meowing, that's my cat, Bobby. She likes to do math in the morning with me. But I've got nine times 35 plus seven. So nine times 35 is 315 plus seven. That gives me 322. So how many people are these buses taking to the game? 322 people. Next, a small theater has eight rows with 26 chairs each, and nine extra chairs have been brought in to make room, hopefully a sold-out show. Um, how many chairs are in the theater now? So I have eight rows of 26. So that's like eight times 26 for how many people are in those rows. And then I have nine that I have to add to it. And we got to use order of operations. So 8 times 26 is 208 plus 9. That gives me 217. So how many chairs? 217 chairs.